Hello everyone and thank you for watching. Today's video is devoted to the most powerful bomb among all, Tsar Bomba. This Soviet RDS-202 hydrogen bomb is known to the Western nations as Tsar Bomba and was tested as an experimental verification of calculation principles and multi-stage thermonuclear weapon designs. It remains the most powerful human-made explosive ever created and detonated. Tsar Bomba is the Western nickname for the Soviet RDS-220 hydrogen bomb. Detonated by the Soviet Union on October 30th of 1961, Tsar Bomba is the largest nuclear device ever detonated and the most powerful man-made explosion in history. With a yield of 50 megatons of TNT, Tsar Bomba was the culmination of a number of hydrogen bomb tests conducted throughout this time by both the Soviet Union and the United States. Tsar Bama was also referred to as Kuzkinamat, or Kuzma's mother. This nickname may refer to Nikita Khrushchev's promise made at a 1960 session of the United Nations General Assembly to show the United States a Kuzkinamat, which also roughly translates to, we'll show you. There were many other nicknames that would be associated with Tsar Bama, such as Big Ivan, Project 7000, Project Code 202, and the Central Intelligence Agency would designate the Tsar Bama nuclear test as JO-111. A team of physicists led by Yuli Karaton designed Tsar Bama. The team also included several others and could have theoretically yielded as much as 100 megatons, but it would have resulted in a dangerous level of nuclear fallout. Additionally, the delivery plane would not have had sufficient time to retreat to a safe distance. Therefore, to minimize nuclear fallout, the third stage incorporated a lead tamper instead of a uranium-238 fusion tamper. It's been speculated that the second stage used this method as well. And when it came time for the test, a Tu-95B Soviet long-range bomber piloted by Major Andrei Durnovstev delivered Tsar Bomba during the test. The bomber was accompanied by a Tu-16 observance plane that was responsible for collecting air samples and filming the test. A reflective white paint would be used on the planes to minimize thermal damage to their surfaces. Tsar Bomba weighed 27 metric tons. It was 8 millimeters in length and 2.1 meters in diameter. The bomb bay doors and fuselage fuel tanks were removed from the Tu-95B due to its large size. Tsar Bomba was attached to a parachute weighing 800 kilograms, which provided the bomber and the observance planes additional time to fly approximately 45 kilometers away from ground zero prior to detonation. Despite the addition of the reflective paint and the parachute, a 50-50 chance of survival would be predicted for those on board. Then on October 30th of 1961, Tsar Bama was detonated in the atmosphere at 11.32 Moscow time over the Mitsushika Bay nuclear testing range in the northern Arctic Circle. The bomb would be set by barometric sensors to detonate at 3,940 meters and would be dropped from a height of 10 kilometers. Tsar Bomba's yield was approximately 1,570 times more powerful than the yield of the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined, and 10 times more powerful than all the conventional weapons exploded during World War II. 
Tsar Bomba also represented 25% of the estimated yield of the Krakatoa volcanic eruption of 1883 and 10% of all nuclear tests by this point. By comparison, the B-41, the United States' largest nuclear weapon, had a theoretical yield of 25 megatons, and the largest nuclear device ever detonated by the U.S. was Castle Bravo, with a yield of 15 megatons. By comparison, the largest nuclear weapon deployed by the Soviet Union, the SS-18 Mod 3 ICBM warhead, was also approximately 25 megatons. In the aftermath, all of the wooden and brick buildings in nearby Severny, located 55 kilometers from the aiming point of Ground Zero, were annihilated. In other Soviet districts, located hundreds of kilometers from the detonation site, wooden houses would be demolished, and brick and stone houses suffered damage. Radio communication outages were also reported and one test witness felt the thermal effects at a distance of 270 kilometers, even with dark goggles on. The intense heat from the detonation was capable of causing third-degree burns at a distance of 100 kilometers from ground zero. The shock wave would be felt as far away as the Dixon settlement, which was 700 kilometers, and windows would shatter at a distance of 900 kilometers. Windows even shattered as far away as Norway and Finland due to atmospheric focusing of the shock wave. Despite being detonated at 3,940 meters above ground, its seismic magnitude would be estimated at 5 to 5.25, and seismic sensors would continue to register shock waves even after a third revolution around the Earth. The original Atomic Energy Commission estimate of Tsar Bomba's yield was 55 to 60 megatons, but since the end of the Cold War and the fallout of the Soviet Union, all Russian sources have confirmed its yield to actually be 50 megatons. Even though calculations would suggest the explosion would reach the ground, this was prevented when the bomb's extremely large shock wave would be reflected. The fireball nearly reached the altitude of the release aircraft, and at the point of detonation, the aircraft dropped one kilometer in the air due to the shock wave, but would make it to safety. The Tsar Bomba mushroom cloud was approximately 67 kilometers high, seven times higher than Mount Everest, and the cloud would reach higher than the stratosphere at its highest altitude. The top of the cloud had a width of 95 kilometers, and the base a width of 40 kilometers. The extreme damage and devastation that was wrought by thermonuclear weapons like Tsar Bomba is unimaginable, and if such a weapon exploded in a large American city like New York, Chicago, San Francisco, or Washington, D.C., their metropolitan areas plus large portions of surrounding suburbs would be completely destroyed and nearly devoid of all life. Tsar Bomba featured a mass of 27,000 kilograms with a length of 8 meters and a diameter of 2.1 meters with a blast yield of 50 megatons of TNT. Thanks for watching. What do you think about this massive nuclear beast? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.